previously on the Hermitcraft server. You hear that? I sound like a proper TV show. Green went AFK next to my base, so I decided to send him up into the sky and then off into the distance. I just sent him north and hoped that he would continue going for as long as possible. And he did continue going for a decent length of time, traveling a couple thousand blocks. But then, unfortunately, something weird happened. Uh, he, he fell to his death and he, he died. Yeah, not really very peace, love, and plants of me. The last time I checked, killing someone with a plane that you constructed doesn't count towards the statistics. So I'm still very much peacing, loving, and planting. But it did mean that I had to have a slightly awkward conversation and very awkward flight home with him. Let's roll the clips. Right. I've just, I've looked back at the, I was truly AFK. I've just looked back at the footage. Yep. And I, I just fell. I just like glitched through the machine. You, you passed the AFK test. You, you, you did something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see your, your, your super, super fancy aeroplane? Oh my goodness. It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> and we're off. Hey! <laughs> the, the boat and private jet. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just two boys I'm a bit cruising. Jealous of your netherite. <laughs> two boys cruising at the front of their jet. <laughs> so this is this is our life now. Yep, this is the rest Wait, of the season. Why are we going forward? Why didn't we go backwards? Well, oh, this is that's a good point. Yeah, it, it might have worked going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> this could work. I I honestly don't know. Can we fly this jet backwards? The block that you're standing on isn't going to go, but that's even funnier. See ya. Oh, <laughs> reversing jet dude this is pretty ridiculous this is the most broken conversation i've ever had in my entire life <laughs> right i look this is where you have to you have to hold crouch but then go here i think this seems to be the the trick and then you kind of do like a weird bouncing it seems like the thing that would work the least but it seems to actually work <laughs> i really don't like this i can promise that flight was a lot longer than what i cut it down to and honestly i'm not sure if this is a good thing but the bottom private jet is now a permanent resident of the Bowton village. And I must admit, it provides a very good vantage point of some of the incredible builds that are in this area. I mean, this isn't bad, just for that reason alone. Although I can't help but feel like this, coupled with the Volcarbo and all of the other nonsense that I've built in this area, I, I'm sure I'm trying the patience of some of the prettier builders in this zone. On the topic of the Volcarbo, I'm very curious. Has this been, has this been successful? It's been successful. We've got eight diamonds in here. I can make four hoes. Eight jukeboxes. Sixteen whole stacks of glow lichen. I think... I think I might be getting carried away. In the previous Hermitcraft episode, I worked incredibly hard on getting all of the houses constructed on the top of our armchair here. And I have to say, I couldn't be much more proud of what I've managed to achieve with this build. I'm not going to bang on about this for too long because... I've been banging on about it a lot, but I'm really, really happy with how all of this came together. I absolutely love the block palette. I love all of the structures. I just think it looks fantastic. I think it looks so good. It is so in line with what I wanted from the build. So I am chuffed a bits. Beyond chuffed. Uh, I'm going to need a new word because chuffed, chuffed is not cutting it. What can, what, what can I say that's, that's better than chuffed? I'm overflowing with chuff. No, that sounds weird. I'm chafed. No, that uh, no, that means something else. I have been riding my bike a lot lately, though. I think we should move very swiftly on from that one. In today's Hermitcraft episode, I want to work on this area on the inside of the waterfall. Because, I mean, let's be real. I, I built up all of the redstone and things, and it looks absolutely fantastic. This is incredible. But... Decoration wise, yeah, it's it's pants, isn't it? It's terrible. So I want to do some serious work on making this place look a little bit better and a little bit more complete and also working on what I'm going to do for the roof because I think I've had a slight change of plan. Time to resource gather. And actually, I think most of the resources that I gathered for all of the houses out the front, I think at least some of them are applicable to what I want to build in here. And I absolutely hate resource gathering, so I'm going to try my best to make use of all of these. This is like recycling, but not for the good of the planet, it's just out of pure laziness. The only thing that I do need is cobbled deep slate, which is why I'm very painfully converting my regular deep slate into this stuff. Okay, so step one of this process is to do the building around the door, and this is pretty simple. I've known from the start that I want all of this redstone on display, so we're just going to build a little frame and then have some space for some glass. I decided instead of glass, I would do iron bars and... 
I, I don't, I don't know if I, I'm not 100% certain on it, but I, I do think it looks quite cool. So I think I'm going to stick with it for now, but potentially change it in the future. I'm really trying to avoid getting too caught up on the details on this thing. I want to get the macro done and then I can focus on the micro. Goodness gracious me. Right. After doing a lot of thinking, I think I'm going to wrap these little sections round and send them right the way up to the top. And the top of this build is actually going to be all the way up here. So this is going to be a very tall room and it's going to have an open ceiling. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. Now, one thing that I really need to get better at is making use of great gradients in my builds. I've I've definitely gotten better at randomizing my blocks a little bit and adding more texture to flat surfaces. I think now to take things to the next step, I need to start adding some gradients and color shifts and gradual uh, oh, I've run out of building words. I basically need to get good, okay? Gradients or not, I do think this looks pretty cool. And don't worry, I am going to be adding some color into the rest of the build. It's not all going to be this gray. And now that the second side is in, it's time to start working on the rest of the room over here. However, I want to make it clear, if I do have one regret in life, it's not putting this storage system in line with the top chests and instead putting it in line with the bottom chests on this side. I thought for some reason that would make it more symmetrical, but no, it looks it looks very unsymmetrical. If I were Impulse, I would move it, but I'm certainly not Impulse, so it's staying. Regardless of who I am, I'm definitely struggling. I'm finding this quite challenging, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up my camera account. We're going to get a time lapse going. And I, I'm just going to see what happens. This could go horribly wrong. But that's a bit of a spoiler. It didn't. It, it all went perfectly fine. Everything went smoothly. And this is once again another reminder to myself that I have to get out of my own way. You know, I have to I have to just stop because so many times I get caught up thinking about it and, and wanting to plan it out some more and stressing myself out. When in reality, when I start placing in the blocks, everything falls into place and everything starts to work out. And even though the first block can be the most challenging, it is also the most important because that is what kickstarts the entire process. Anyway, moving on from inspirational building talks, uh, I want to talk to you about the mumbo jumbo jumbo cycle. For those who don't know, I'm cycling a thousand kilometers in October for the Cycling Projects charity. I'll put all of their details and the Just Giving page down in the description. Thought so I'll give you a bit of an update. It is currently the 22nd of October and I've cycled 700 kilometers, which means I've got 300 kilometers left to go. And that is partly in thanks to a 140 kilometer bike ride that I did yesterday, which was brutal. It was really, really difficult. It was also over 1,100 meters of elevation, which basically means it was really, really hilly. And I'm absolutely pooped, but I feel amazing. Like, it was an incredible experience. I loved it and I cannot wait to knock off the remaining 300 kilometers. I'm gonna smash this challenge and that makes me very excited. And also we've raised over 5,000 pounds. That's nuts. So this is what we've got. This is what we've got building wise. And I have to say it looks incredibly grand. This looks very, very fancy indeed. My only critique of it is that currently it looks a little bit cold and that was not really intentional, but we can fix it. I think to get around this problem, we need to have much warmer colors on the floor and that will bring the whole build together and make it feel really nice. And of course, I'm going to get a bunch of greenery in and a bunch of leaf action, which definitely should help that situation. But other than that, I really, really do think this looks good. I think it looks super cool and once again, it is slightly out there in terms of building styles. This is, yep, this is not, this is not the sort of thing that I normally build. I think it's safe to say that I'm really pushing myself outside of my comfort zone this season and I'm loving it. I'm also currently pushing myself outside of my comfort zone because that time lapse was four hours and I cycled a very long way yesterday. My buttocks are hurting slightly. I really need to stop talking about my buttocks. It is now the next day and I have at least begun work on placing in all of the floor for this thing. So the idea is, is that it's going to be in segments. First segment is going to be orange. And orange looks cool. It definitely warms and brightens up the place, which is fantastic. Adds a little bit of contrast. I'm a very big fan indeed. It's also, of course, worth mentioning that these lights are just temporary. These are not going to be sticking around. This is not some strange design feature that I've added into this build. The next stage is going to be this midsection. Now, this central area is going to be like a little garden. So we're going to have a bunch of greenery and, and plants and things in here. And then on either side of it, we're going to have these slightly dipped darker blue areas, these kind of cyan tones that I really, really like. And of course, the entirety of this place is going to be slabs just to stop these guys from spawning because unfortunately, slimes actually spawn regardless of light level. So I could light this up entirely 
these guys would still spawn, so everything has to be slabs. Which is a bit of a nightmare, I'm not gonna lie, but it's fine, we can work with it. Although I am a tiny bit disappointed in myself, because if I had just built this floor three blocks higher, then I wouldn't be facing this problem. We all make mistakes. This is looking good, this is looking really cool, this is incredibly grand. I know grand wasn't the look that I was going for, but it's ending up grand and that's... Grand? I don't know why, but this feels very Art Deco. I think I think it's the colours that I'm using. It reminds me of like the Great Gatsby or the Shape of Water. Whatever it is, it looks cool. So with the entirety of the floor now all in place, now it is time for me to work out how on earth I'm actually going to light this thing without visible torches. Which is something that I always really struggle with. Yeah, I mean that doesn't look terrible. That actually looks pretty good. I actually think that adds to the build. And the good thing is we don't necessarily need to worry about light levels because none of the blocks that are in this room are actually spawnable blocks. This is purely for aesthetics. I still can't get over how grand this is. This guy unfortunately needs to die and the only way that I can think of killing him is by making use of an anvil. This piece of love and plants thing has pushed me into some strange areas of Minecraft. Now the big question is, is this actually going to work? Are we ready? <laughs> Nice! <laughs> yes! That is the first time I've killed anything with an anvil. Wait, does it count as a player kill? Oh, thank goodness for that. I panicked. Anyway, I guess this is a good time to point out that the lighting in this area is done. And clearly... Clearly it's, it's not been done well enough. Where? How? What? Why are you here? What have you... What? Where? Where did you... Where? 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 Oh, I haven't done all the lighting down that edge. Maybe? Or maybe this central area is a bit too dark? I can't wait for the part two of Caves and Cliffs when they change the way that mobs spawns. They only spawn at light level zero. That is, that is exciting. So all of this area is good and done. All of this area is all good and done. This area is not all good and done. I did think about joking that that was finished and that was how I was going to leave it, but then I realized that some of you would literally punch me. I would feel a punch just come through my screen. I'd be knocked off my chair and probably go out my window. Collective punch of half a million people probably would hurt the face a tiny bit. What on earth has happened to Grian's face? Grian? And now he's gone. What on earth is he doing? <laughs> why does he have a moustache? And why does the moustache look so fine on my face, but as soon as it's on Grian's face, it just looks horrendous? I'm going to try not to think about that too much, because for now, I want to get to work on building this final wall, and I think I'm just essentially going to mirror what we have going on over here. Obviously without the gigantic piston door. Okay, we're off to a pretty good start here, but I, I don't know what to put in the middle because obviously we don't have the big piston door. It turns out this gigantic piston door is actually pretty cool looking. And now I need to think of something equally cool to put back here. I think now that I've cleared out some extra space, I'm just going to follow along with a similar theme to what we have going on for the rest of the build. That probably makes the most sense. This never gets boring. Boom, boom, 41 levels. Okay, I know I was on 40 before I did that, but still it's cool. And I'll tell you what else is cool. This, this, this is very cool. I need to be so careful swinging my pickaxe around with bats about because I don't want my first kill to be a bat. Can you imagine? Oh, he's asking for it now. Right, I've got, to, I've got to keep my eyes out. Okay, so with this bottom section now done, it is now time for me to move on to this top area here, which is going to be a little bit more challenging. So obviously all of this area is storage system. This part up here I kind of want it to be a platform going into walls, which will then go into the ceiling, which I will explain in a little bit. But I definitely think I want to, I want to continue this theme of the walls going round. And then I think in terms of the floors, I imagine I'll just do some mossage and some greenery. I want it to be quite vegetation based, I imagine. I do quite like the idea of this platform though, and being able to stand up here because it gives a really nice view of this build. I mean, this... This is a gorgeous looking area. I am incredibly happy with what we've managed to achieve with this space here. And I know it sounds silly, but I've just added in some stone slabs on top of both of the walls and that makes it look so much more finished. So imagining what it will look like with walls wrapping around the top here, that's exciting. So I guess I should just get to work on it. And the immediate first word that comes to my head is of course, grand. This is about as grand as it gets. This is like being in a gigantic theater. This is ridiculously grand. This is like Instagram flex grand. This is like I'm gonna start selling courses on how to become rich like me grand. This is like here in my garage just bought this new Lamborghini but instead it's this gigantic hall grand. How old is that reference? Seriously, when, when was that about? I feel like that might have been like 2013, 2014. Some of you might not even been born then. But you know, grand is good. So I'm gonna keep going. Oh, and just to inform you, 
I'm still a potato. For the past few hours, I kind of phased back briefly to being a human, which was weird. And it's really made me ask a few questions about what I truly want in my life. Do I actually want to be a potato? If I could somehow peel myself and become a human again, would I do that? Is flesh better than skin? Protein better than carbs? Are potatoes morally better than humans? We're always asking the important questions on Mumbo Jumbo Hermitcraft episodes. It's a bit of a sad day, but unfortunately the corner office is going, and it will be reconstructed if it's needed again. But for now, I'm doing pretty well on iron, so no extra sponsorships are required. Wow. This was a bit of a monstrous project in the end, but I think we can all agree it looks fantastic. This is so cool. This might just be one of the coolest rooms I've constructed. Until we turn around, yet there's still, I still have one tiny bit left to do. I keep forgetting about this back wall. But here's the thing, all right, ZF has just sent me a message asking me if I can check out his redstone contraption. And obviously I'm going to go and check out his redstone contraption. As much as I love building, I've been building for like the past three days. I want to see some redstone. So let's quickly bob over there, take a look, and then we can get back to finishing this thing. To the laboratory. Have you made a potion before? Not in a long time, actually, to be quite frankly honest with you, ZF. Am I expected to remember the recipes here, or is this... You, my friend, have come to the right place, because this <laughs> machine, just through here, step on down, is the Combruta version 2.0 <laughs> that does all your potion -y needs for you, and you need to remember absolutely nothing at all. So, it's finished. I've, I've just spent the whole day working on this crazy thing. Right. Um, I, I'll give you a clue. Hit this lever first, and then then you can just peruse and select whichever potion you like, and uh, we'll watch it be made in front of our very eyes. Is there, is there is there a potential that it could break? Like, do I have to be a little bit careful? You can be as rough as you like. Right. Okay. So this this is going. Is that good? It takes a bit. It, it warms up. It warms up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh oh oh! This is fancy. <laughs> Okay, so, so the machine's now on, it's it's passive. Now we need to select which potion we want. So you see we've got a bunch of uh, settings over here for potions. You've got your, your duration and stuff over there. You've got whether you want to make it splash in or anything. All right, so okay, so pick, I think- Pick I, your potion. I guess, do I have to do it in any specific order or is it all fine? Pull any lever you like in any order. Right, okay, so I definitely want it to be a splash potion. I definitely want it to last a long time and I definitely want to have this one. Speed. Okay, fantastic. So when your settings are correct, here's the button. Okay. Feel free to press it and then watch the magic. Oh, only press once all settings. Okay, everything is correct. Good stuff. Okay, this. Now we, we, we wait. We wait. Which potion did you get again? Speed potion. Speed, speed potion. Okay, <laughs> so, okay. So wait. <laughs> oh. That is so cool. How is... That is... It's, it's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> what? That is that is genius. That is actually really, <laughs> really, really cool, dude. This is wicked. That was that your potion? I feel like a magician now. Um, it... I do realise I forgot to put some uh, water bottles in, <laughs> so that's my only bad. But no, no, no. Oh, no that's no. that's that's absolutely. You also need the blaze powder in the top there in the oh, in the Oh goodness me! Oh, uh, <laughs> where's the blaze powder when you need it? Um... <laughs> Hey, you hey. sell it, don't you? I do. Sell, I do sell it. Do we have to go all the way back to my shop to get blaze powder? Have you, have you got any like no, loose not, in your pockets? No, or I don't something? just walk hold around with blaze powder on me, dude. This is not. Stand there and, and look pretty. <laughs> they're brewing all up. You can see though that they're in the they're in the right order in the hopper even to to brew your requested potion. This is so. wicked. Is there is there <laughs> is there any chance? Am I allowed to get like a little sneak peek at the redstone, or is that pulling back the curtain? That, uh, and is that? Oh, you can. Please, please do. I would love you to crawl around through the redstone. Okay, um, okay. I'm excited. <laughs> this is cool. If we head down here. It's it's a little bit of a spaghetti mess. This is definitely a spaghetti mess. This is so fancy. This is so cool. This is by far one of... This is the coolest potion brewing stations I've ever seen. It is the coolest thing ever. You know, you Clip have... that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> this is so, so cool. Well, that was ridiculously, ridiculously awesome. And now we have a wall to construct. Just a little wall up there. Now, I want to stick with the depth that we have on the back wall. So I'm gradually taking out this area. And as always, I'm asking whether or not I should have constructed a beacon for this. And because I'm lazy and potentially stupid, I didn't. I have bought all of the acacia wood. So here I am doing it the peasant way. But now, after a lot of work... And and a lot of grinding away, this build is now all fully constructed. And 
I am so, so proud of myself for building this once again. I'm going to pat myself on the back again for like the fifth episode in a row. But this is a wicked build, and it's a big build. This is actually quite a big build. It didn't seem like a big build when I started it, but look at it, it's gigantic. This is a pretty enormous room that I've just constructed here. However, there is, obviously, there is, there is a gaping hole in the ceiling. Now, let me just quickly explain. I think me and Green have a bit of a Vulcan mind meld going on. You know, I feel like we're sharing our two brain cells between us because both of us, independently of one another, came up with the idea of a night sky. And, and Green's night sky not only suits his build, incredibly well but he's also his night sky looks cooler than my idea for a night sky so i've decided that i'm still going to make use of the height of this cavern that we have here but i'm going to do it making use of luscious things so i definitely want to have some overgrowth i want to have glow berries hanging down and i just want it to look like i, I just want it to look almost like there's a structure holding things up to a certain extent maybe some arches going across but other than that is going to be things growing down into this room. It's going to be like a reverse garden, you know? There's going to be a garden up at the top there, dangling things down into this room. And boy, oh boy, do I think that's going to look beautiful. Just imagining that, I think that is going to look absolutely gorgeous. So that is the plan of action. I'm going to go away and do a whole bunch of designing work and working on some concepts and things. But that is why I put these braces in, because... I want to make sure that we have like a good motive for the archways there. I think that'll look really cool. But all in all, I just, I can't wait to build it. I can't wait to build it. But that being said though, our base is nearing completion. You know, this room is done. The exterior is mostly done. We're basically all, almost there. It's kind of come together really quickly. Anyway, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this Hammercraft episode. And I will catch you in the next one. See ya. And it goes without saying, I don't know if you can tell... I am really, really enjoying building at the minute. I'm having a ton of fun. I'm I'm, ex I'm just enjoying exploring my creativity. With that being said, I do think the next Hermit Craft episode is going to be redstone based. You know, I'm also, I'm itching to do some ridiculous and silly redstone. So prepare yourselves for that.